Welcome to All About Articulation, where we do a deeper dive into the articulation of some of your favorite action figures while glossing over things like sculpt, paint apps, character history, accessories, because I suck at that and there are already so many great reviews on YouTube who do that already, and I don't want to waste your time. For those of you who not uh, who have not seen my, uh, my videos, um, I am an artist. Uh, I basically, you know, got back into collecting, dab I dabbled in the collecting, mainly as um, a way of buying models to assist me in perspective and anatomy with my graphic novel. I'm a self-published uh, graphic novel, this comic bard as I draw and write my, my own stuff. So that's kind of why I got into it. And articulation for me, more so than anything, is very important. Um, however, watching other people's reviews, I sometimes got a little, um, I don't know, frustrated or disappointed in the, so sometimes a lot of reviewers, they kind of gloss over articulation and understandably so because, you know, their interests are more about sculpt and, and paint apps and detailing and that's kind of not what I focus on. So I kind of do a, a deeper dive into the articulation only. Um, and because I'm just not very good and I don't really feel like I'm any authority on telling and reviewing and telling anybody what's good and what's not good about um, sculpt and paint apps and whatnot. So that's kind of like where I'm coming from. So if you, um, you know, are looking more for that type of review, um, this might not be the place for you. But if you want to to get a deeper dive and a deeper look into articulation, well, hopefully I can help you out. Okay, so th this review is about is the Marvel Legends, um, I believe Target exclusive two pack Storm and Thunderbird two pack. Although this review is just on Storm, I'm actually going to review Thunderbird and Warpath together, being that they're the brothers and they have similar pain and. Um, uh, um, character history, I guess. So I'm gonna do them separately, and I'm gonna just, this one. I'm just gonna do on Storm. Um, my initial thoughts right out of the right out of the gate. Um, when the at first th the this two pack was very hard to come by, and I believe that it was a Target exclusive, and I had to hunt down. I went to Target after Target here in New York, and I couldn't find it, and finally I found it, and now apparently they're everywhere, so I <laughs> should have just waited like a week or two, and now I see people sell on eBay or on uh, Facebook groups and Reddit groups, and they're just selling both of these guys loose for like 20, 25, 25 bucks a piece, so now you can get these guys anywhere. It, the two-pack goes for 50 bucks MSRP at Target, but if you just want one or the other, you can get them now uh, pretty easily. So my initial thoughts, I kind of balked at first because being an, an articulation nut, Marvel Legends, they don't normally have great, they don't normally make their female figures with great articulation. And I'm, I was kind of looking at the, the promo pics of the Storm and I was so, I was debating on, I was like, ah, should I get it? Should I not? I don't think the articulation is going to be there. I don't want to, you know, hunt and spend $50 on a figure that's, not up to par with my expectations of articulation. I might as well spend the extra, you know, the extra money and get maybe, um, I don't know, uh, one of those Japanese import figures, like an SH Figure Arts or a Mafex or something like that, or uh, Storm Collectibles, which I love. But um, I said, you know what? It's Storm. I got to get her. And I'm so glad I did. Just from an articulation standpoint, she um, definitely exceeded my expectations. And... Albeit it's a low bar for Marvel Legends female figures, a lot of the, the, the articulation is very similar and lacking, but um, this is, she's the queen, man. She, it's Queen Storm, you know? Would you say she's probably the most popular female character of Marvel Comics? I mean, who would be up there? You know, aside from, I'm not talking about powers. I'm just talking about recognizability, uh, uh, um, you know, fan favorites, popularity, right? It would be Storm, maybe, maybe what? Like one of, the, like Gwen Stacy or the, any of those, like Spider Gwen, you know, Gwenpool, all, all the Gwens, maybe she's up there. Black Widow, maybe, because of the Avengers movies. But if not them, it would be, I would say it's Storm, right? She's like 
the Wonder Woman equivalent in the Marvel Universe. She's the, she's the, the Queen Bee, Storm. Okay, enough rambling, let's get down to it. Um, she does come with a lot of accessories. Uh, I already, I don't know where they are, but it doesn't matter. She comes with two heads, two capes, uh, different pairs of sets of hands, different sets, uh, lightning effects. They more or less, no matter what configuration you have, the articulation doesn't change too much. She stands, oh, okay, she does have very tiny feet and high heels at that. So getting her to stand without any sort of assistance is going to be a trick. I can't believe I nailed it just now on the first try. And watch her tip over now. So she stands about, where do you say, uh, about six and a quarter inches. Let me give you the side view. Six, uh, yeah, to the top of her hair, six and a quarter inches. Maybe just under six and a half, between six and a quarter and six and a half. Um, the hair is very thick. Typical Marvel Legends, um, very hard plastic, not soft at all. The cape is made of a softer material. I wish the hair was made the same as the same material as the cape, because then you can actually articulate the head. Unfortunately, you can't. So upward articulation is going to be hindered. You could push the head back and make her extend her back to look up if she were to. But that's about it, though. That's all you can. That's as high. That's as up far high as she could look. Uh, she can look far down. Not too much, but again, that's frustratingly, that's it. Uh, what are you going to do? The cape does come off, so let me show you what the articulation would be. It just popped the head off, and then the cape slides right off like that. Boom. And now she looks uh, like a dominatrix, dominatrix storm. And then you pop the head back in. Pop, is it in? There we go. So without the cape, the head is a little bit looser, but um, you could add some adhesive to it, so a little bit of a pledge full of polish, and it'll fix it right up. But yeah, even by taking the cape off, the head and neck does not articulate too much. It just... That's, that's it. It just hits the hair, gets in the way, hits the shoulders. What are you going to do, you know? Until toy manufacturers can come up with a, a technology or a material, which I think they have. Like, I did the review on the uh, McFarlane Toys Infected Superman, and this material here is so soft and so pliable that even I think if you use that material, even if it's a, a thicker version of that material as hair, you might get more, more give. But anyway, until we, uh, we, 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 we reach that day, we're going to be prisoners of the thick hair, solid plastic, no head articulation concept. All right, I'm going to put the cape back on. Should I leave the, I'll leave the cape off just so that her articulation is un, uninhibited, okay? Uh, her shoulders, no, uh, no butterfly joints. It goes up very far up, though. So the, here's her hot tub pose. Uh, of course, you know, it goes all the way around, all the typical. No bicep swivel, but elbow swivel. And the elbow articulation, even though it's a single jointed elbow, which, if you've noticed, pinless technology right there. You don't see the pins, so that's a, one of these premium features that Marvel Legends likes to tout these days. Even though it is a single jointed elbow, um... It's this new, I don't know what it is. It's a new technology that they've been implementing in a, some of their female figures. You've, I first, you've first seen this in the She-Hulk figure uh, in the Fantastic Four wave. I believe it was last year. And it's similar here where it's single joint. It's a single joint, but it bends past, way past 90. So if that were 90 degrees, this would be uh, maybe about 60. So the elbows bend at 60 degrees which is cool. Um, the wrist joints are typical Marvel Legends wrist joint. It goes up and down and twists around. Um, you only have one ball joint at the upper diaphragm. I, upper diaphragm, I believe that's, yeah, right, right, right at the uh, 
at the at the at the at the mid waist at the mid torso I should say and it goes around this much the ab crunch goes that far down and the back extension goes m a little further back and um, the uh, she has no lower ab articulation so this is just one solid piece with one cut above the ball joint like I said there right uh, around the the rib cage area uh, in terms of splits she can go that far down Glenn Webb split how far a figure can do go down on a split while both feet are on the floor is oops that's that far down that's your Glenn Webb okay uh, upper thigh swivel double joint knee that does not get much further past here so if that's 90 it's maybe about I'd say about 80 she gets an 80 degree bend at the knee um, and that's because um, the cut in the back of the of the lower joint of the double jointed knee this part here is a little too I think um, it protrudes out a little bit too oh sorry I'm off camera it protrudes out, it protrudes out a little bit too far so it prevents the knee from bending any further because it is that part right there if you can see it it's that part right there the lower joint of the double knee of the double jointed knee the lower it's just yeah you can't get much further which is okay it doesn't really get in the way of posing for storm this is in terms of uh, um, posability it's 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 great I love it she can hit all the typical storm poses that you would need she's not gonna you're not gonna post storm the same way you would post a spider-man or uh maybe even like a daredevil or a nightcrawler for example so she is her posing her articulation is character specific as i as, as i like to say and that's all i could ask for you could get her into all the poses that you would have storm right um and also, if you want to be, you know, realistic about it, or as realistic as you can with a, a mutant who can control the weather at, on a whim, if she's wearing these thigh-high leather, you know, pl boots, synth synthetic or, or whatever, vinyl boots, you're not going to get too much articulation. I don't know if you ever wore something made of this material, but it's just, it's not exactly spandex, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, so what have, what have I, what, what am I missing here, huh? Uh, just be careful with the, with standing her, because her feet are very small, and the footprint, her literal footprint, is very, very, very tiny. Because it's, it is, uh, high heels, so she's gonna have a lot of issues standing on her own. So you might have to lean her back against something or put her in a flight stand. Um, here is my other Storm figure. This is the retro re-release with the Storm, the Punk Storm head on it. And this is the flight stand. So this is generally how I have her posed on my shelf and desk. Uh... But like I said, the articulation is great, and it's just, it's probably my, one of my favorite, if not the, my favorite Storm figures from Marvel Legends. And if you can get it for, you know, at a, at a decent price, for sure, pick her up. Okay, I think that's about it. Any questions, any comments, feel free to leave it in the, you know comment section below I, I try to answer as much uh, as possible or if you want to just drop me a line or you want to insult me or call me an idiot go ahead I don't care okay uh yeah if you can pick her up she's a great figure thanks guys